Your Locked On Penguins, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to this Wednesday evening episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I'm your host, Hunter Hodes. You can follow me on Twitter, of course, <clears throat> at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. Every time I try to record my podcast, I, I get this weird cough that I don't have all day. I think it's just because uh, it's like it's like it knows it's coming. But boy, we have a lot to get into for this episode of Locked On Penguins. Uh, what a win tonight! That's now nine in a row, five to three win over the St. Louis Blues. They're on pace for 110 points. The Penguins are. They're in fourth place in the Metropolitan Division. That just goes to show how competitive Carolina, uh, the Rangers, and the Capitals have been this year. But, you know, let's just, you know, go biggest takeaways, all that, you know, starting off. Um, I think the biggest thing is <clears throat> the Penguins steambagged this team for most of the night. The only reason why it was even close was because Casey DeSmith crapped the bet. And I, I guess let's just get that out of the way now. Um, I, it goes in line with my biggest takeaways. Um, he's bad. Um, I think that's really the only negative thing I'm going to say on this podcast, but I have to get it out of the way. Um, he's not good. He hasn't been good all season. He wasn't good at the end of last season. Something's got to give there. Um, I, I really think Ron Hextall is going to have to go out and get someone. He, maybe you can call someone up from Wilkesbury. I'm sure one of the goalies down there can't be worse than what um, Casey DeSmith has given them this season. He's been one of the worst goalies in goals saved above expected. Um, save percentage-wise, goals, goals against average, excuse me. Um, the three goals tonight, um, <clears throat> that first one, no screen um, from Shen, and he just goes over the glove, and it's like you got to make a save a little bit there. The second one, after watching a little bit more, I kind of blame Chris Letang more than DeSmith, though when that's the second biggest chance in the game, you you got I I would like the goaltender to make a save um in that situation. Now again, Chris Tang was pretty embarrassing in that sequence. Um overall he has the puck at the point, right? Left point. Um uh, and instead of either sending it around the boards, you know, asking for a forward to go down and you know start the cycle game or you know fire a shot on net, he decides to fire a puck cross ice through eight or nine bodies and it's just like that's not the play there. Like I said, you got to send it around the boards. You got to put it to the net. He chose plan C, which obviously was bad. Comes back, Dumoulin is playing it right. And then Latang is a little bit out of position. And then that leads to just really giving up that goal. I didn't like how he gave it up because he, it didn't look like he moved at all. Um, just did not even move his glove, also. But that said, was not a good play there from Tanger. He knows better than that. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, he's good for one play like that a game. Hint, hint, he's not. Um, but it's still something that I would like for him not to do moving forward. It was just that, – that's not the play there for Tanker. Um, um, the third one, that one was just that, – that's awful. Um, Brian Russ scores to make it 2-1. to one. The Penguins have all this momentum. They're playing well and all that. But, and, you know, Colton Pareko, booming shot from the point. Not really any traffic in front of DeSmith gives up the goal, and you know what Mike Sullivan thinks of the performance. Adam Gretz said this best on Twitter, and I'm going to echo his statement here. You know what Mike Sullivan thinks of this performance when he is pulling his goal, his backup goaltender with, what was it, five or six minutes left in the second period um, when there's also a game tomorrow. He could have easily had left him in, but – Sully knew that he was getting bad goaltending. The game was still within reach at that point. It was only a two-goal deficit. The Penguins ended up coming right back and cutting it to 3-2 going into the third. But, you know, it, it shows a lot when Sully's like, okay, I'm going to give my starter 25 minutes tonight, and then I got to go start him again tomorrow. And that just goes with my overall point. This team has to go out and get a backup goaltender. If Tristan Jari, knock on wood here, God forbid he gets hurt, uh, this team's up a creek then. Um, you, I mean, we all saw what he did tonight when he came in. 25 minutes of shutout hockey, made some really nice saves. I mean, he didn't have to do a lot because the Penguins were tightening things up defensively, I thought. But when he was called upon, 
he was making some really dazzling saves. And that's what he's been doing all year. But the thing is, you can't count on him to do that every single game. You just can't. I mean, not in today's NHL. You're seeing it year after year. The amount of uh, starts that a starting goaltender gets, it, it goes down. You know, usually you could rely on your starter to give you, you know, 65 to 70 starts. Now it's below 60 for teams. You know, you see a lot of teams do this platoon stuff. Look what happened last year with the Canadians. Carey Price and Jake Allen actually shared the net for a, a lot of that last season. And Carey Price didn't, I don't even think Price started 60 games. And you saw how healthy he was come playoff time and, and how just how much rest he had. And then he was going to, he was able to go take the Canadians on a Stanley cup final run. I know they lost in five games to Tampa, but you know, that was the key there to getting price right because he didn't look right in the regular season, but he was able to turn it on the playoffs because of how much rest he had. That's something similar. I kind of want here with Jari. They just, they need someone that can give him, that can give the team at least average goaltending when he is not in the lineup. Now, who is that? I mean, Yaroslav Halak, I think that would be a great option. Now, I know the Penguins have a lot of history with Halak. It would piss off a lot of Capitals fans. That part, I don't really give a crap about. But, I mean, he makes sense. Anton Hudobin from Dallas, I know he's kind of been okay this year. They will probably have to eat some money, but I would still do it. Anyone at this point is a better option than DeSmith. I think if you're looking at a hole on this team, and there's hardly any, the defense is great. The, four, the top six is awesome. The overall forward depth is great. The starting goaltender is out of this world right now. But the biggest area they got to address is the backup. And, you know, again, the Penguins probably steam bagged this team 5 2, 5 1, something like that, if Jari plays the entire game. Um, I 100% believe that. Um, that it, they were just that good throughout this performance. You know, I tweeted it out. During the first period, the Penguins had around 75% of the scoring chances for at the end of the first, nearly 66% of the, uh, the shot attempts for, um, expected goals. It was around 80%, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, and it continued um, throughout the rest of the game. I'm, I'm checking natural stat trick right now, um, of course. But overall, for the Penguins tonight, 58.8% of the shot attempts at 5v5, 61% of the scoring chances for at 5v5. High danger, the Blues led 9-8, but expected goals for 2.59 for the Penguins, 1.62 for the St. Louis Blues, and they scored three goals. That just goes to show how bad Casey DeSmith crapped the bed tonight. So I did have to spend this first segment talking about that. I mean, I apologize, just going starting off a little bit negative. The rest of the show is going to be positive, but I had to talk about the elephant in the room. It's... It's not going away every time he gets a start. Um, this is going to come up because, you know, he has given up three to four plus goals um, now. And I think it's 10 out of his last 13 starts going back to last season. Um, so it, it's just, it, it's it's not right right now. And the Penguins are going to have to fix that um, if they want to go on a magical run. And I do think that this team <clears throat> has what it takes right now um, to go on that magical run. Coming up in the next segment, we're going to go, all into all the other positives with Sidney Crosby doing Sidney Crosby things, Jordan Bennington acting like a piss baby, Evan Rodriguez with a vintage Ovechkin goal, um, Brian Russ continuing his hot streak, um, and so much more. Going to my thoughts on the goalie interference challenge from Craig Berube, um, and just a look ahead to Thursday's game as well for the Penguins. But first, it is the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Bilt Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar as well. Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good, you'll want to eat it. Unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spill, <clears throat> you want to eat healthy, but it just gets so boring. By week three, you might be thinking, well, this just isn't worth it. Where's the chocolate? That's the thing with Built Bars. They're covered in 100% chocolate. Most of them have 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four grams of nut carbs, and 17 grams of of protein. Compare that to a candy par, which usually has around 240 calories, three grams, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Even if you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least get something that tastes good and is good for you. That way, when you enjoy a delicious built bar, you can almost always count it <clears throat> as a workout. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, LOCK and you can get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Welcome back to this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, 
Hunter Hodes. If you want to follow me on Twitter, at Hunter Hodes. You can also follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. <clears throat> Again, I don't know what the hell is going on here with this cough. And of course, I'm just going to exit out. If Doug keeps texting me while I do this podcast, um, there's going to be some problems. But you know what? Sometimes that happens on Elliot Freeman's 32 Thought Show. So we're just going to whirl with it because, you know, that's just how we're going here. But, you know, Brian Ross opens the scoring tonight. I don't know if you all saw, If I don't know if some of you all saw, watch the replay. Look what he does when the original shot is still in the air. You know, really nice save by Bennington, but kind of has a Sid-like swap with his stick, is able to deflect it in, makes it two to one. You, you just don't teach that kind of stuff at hockey school. And, you know, Rust has struggled for a lot of the season. He's been banged up a lot, but it looks like now he looks healthy. You know, I definitely think he re-aggravated something when he got hurt a few weeks ago, but right now um, it, it's all coming together. He scored five goals in his last two games. He had another one that made it three to two at the time um, for Wednesday night's game. Just an awesome saucer pass from Sid. We're going to get to Sid right after I touch on this, but just a and then great pass, as I just said, but then Rust finishing ability there was top notch. You know, Bennington wasn't able to get across just as quick. And I think my TV is on in the background. We're just going to turn that off. Um, I don't need that to distract anyone here. Um, but, you know, he was able to rip that top cheese. Bennington could not also put his glove up there on time. And just that, that was a great goal. Um, it was a three on two rush. Um, and again, you know, just getting to Cindy Crosby now, that was probably his best performance of the season. Actually, I shouldn't say probably. That was his best performance of the season. That pass was incredible. You know, that Blues player, you know, Mikola, whatever his name, I'm going to call him Yusuf Rikola's long-lost brother or something like that. You know, when you piss off Sidney Crosby, um, bad things are going to come to you. And he had his signature screw you goal. I'm not going to say the other word. And this is a you know, at least a PG, um, PG, maybe PG 13 level uh, podcast here. Um, I don't need to say that word. Um, but, you know, he had his vengeance screw you goal there when he was able to tie the game at three um, a little late in, th- in the third period, had that huge celly. You don't usually see Sid celebrate a lot of goals like he did with that one. You could tell this one really meant a lot because, you know, he was taking um, a-, a-, a physical toll I should say in this game, the Blues were really trying to rough him up. That's the kind of style of hockey that Craig Berube likes his team to play. So I'm not surprised that they were going after Sid a little bit. I'm sure Brian Burke doesn't like that just because his truculent saying, as he likes to say it. But, you know, he was able to get the last lab, gets the tying goal. And then Craig Berube makes a very big rookie mistake um, challenging that because Jordan Bennington decided to have a full-blown diaper meltdown and protest to the ref. That is his, as Craig Berube's first lesson here, and he should know better. Um, you don't need to trust Jordan Bennington um, when he has a tantrum because he has a tantrum over basically any goal he gives up. I think this came from Darren um, D Nasty on Penguins Twitter. Um, but for those that are not on social media, um, I am gonna you know relay this here because this is this is a great point. Um, if I can find this tweet here. Real quick, um, who is the last NHL player that every single uh, person hates due to their personality like people do with Bennington? That is a great question, and I think it, it, you can't really say anyone else other than Bennington. Brad Marchand, as he says, he's funny. Tony D'Angelo, I mean, th- 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 that speaks for itself. But I'm pretty sure the entire league outside of the Blues and their fan base hates Jordan Bennington. And I, 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 how, am I, how am I supposed to say this? I think I, I see why, you know, I mean, I've watched him on national TV during the playoffs against other teams, you know, see him have full blown tantrums way worse than this, but you can definitely see why a lot of other teams, fan bases and other team team players, especially um, do not like him. Um, I'm pretty sure someone on the flames earlier this year, it was last season or something like that, tried to spear him um, during play. Um, so He's just a player that I don't think a lot of players in the NHL respect. And I just didn't really understand the challenge there. Going back to overall about Craig Berube, don't, didn't mean to get off track there. But going back to what I was saying, to not get the challenge there, just because there was nothing that resembled goaltender interference there. As the ref said, Sid was outside the box, so that's not interference. But 
Bennington initiated the contact. He put his stick out there to get in Sid's way. Obviously, Sid is going to not really whack it out, but it's going to move and he's going to lose it. But Bennington did it to himself. That's, I mean, Bennington can think all he wants that that's goal to interference. By the letter of the law, it wasn't because he initiated it. At the end of the day, that's what happened. The Penguins get the tying goal. And then you know, another big takeaway, Evan Rodriguez. I mean, this is ridiculous at this point, what we're seeing from him. Um, already, again, has his career high in goals. Um, but this one, though, um, 12 seconds apart from Sid's. Look at that rocket that he had from the vintage. And yes, I mean the vintage Alex Ovechkin spot. Um, I'm sure he made Ovi look proud um, with that goal. Um, I, I hope if Ovi watches that while he's you know, having an off day or something, he's cracks a smile because um, that was right from his office. It was just as hard as one of his shots. And, you know, he, he made sure to pay homage to him, Erod, that is, a little bit there. And I think at this point, the fan base and the Penguins have to start asking themselves, who is going to come off the top power play? You know, Sid's not. You're going to take Geno off and give him his own unit? Probably not. Is Jake Ensel going to come off? Probably not. Is Chris Latane going to come off? Nope. So what's the plan here? Are you going to take Brian Rust off? That would probably be what I would do, even though he's been heating up the last couple of games. <clears throat> but he also gets really good chances while he's on Sid's line with Jake. So I feel like you can just keep him there. Put him on the second power, second power play unit with Jeff Carter, Brian Dumoulin, John Marino, Mike Matheson, whoever, whatever defenseman you want to put on there. Danton Heinen's also, of course, a great option. Kasperi Kapanen. And you still have two pretty good units for, excuse me, um, two power plays. That's what I would do, at least. My first man unit, Sid, Gino, whenever he's back, should be in the next couple of days, I would say. Um, Chris Tang, Jake Ensel, and Rodriguez. I mean, it, it, this is like a McCann level impact from last year, what we're seeing right now, probably a bit more um, with what he's been able to do this year on both that unit and 5v5. So um, that's my opinion. Let me know what you all would do. <clears throat> um, and down in the comments for YouTube, at the Locked on Penguins Twitter account, or you know, um, you can also just DM me on any social media platform, um, mainly Twitter. Um, I don't need any of you all going to find my Facebook or something like that. Though I also don't post on Facebook. Um, I think that the website is just so, it's just not that good. Um, I, I do use my Instagram um, a lot more though. But again, anyways, getting way off track here. Um, just a tremendous job by Rodriguez on that one. And then finally, the fifth goal. Um, what a play from Teddy Bluger to get that to begin who has a tap in. Brock continues to be awesome. And I, I think CK404 response code on Penguins Twitter. For those that listen to this show that have social media, I cannot recommend him enough for Penguins uh, content. He is one of my favorite follows on Penguins Twitter. Um, he made the great point overall saying, you know, kudos to the Penguins management for finding the perfect tandem replacement put, and then the coaches to put him in that role and then for that line to not miss a beat because Brock has been awesome this season. You know, the depth is just, it, it's sensational. And, you know, Bluger especially had a couple really nice um, shot blocks earlier in the third period too, right off Tarasenko. He was able to dive down, put his stick, um, the puck hits his stick while he's diving, gets back up, and then is able to make another shot block and able to clear the zone. It's just like, that's what Teddy Bluger is going to do for you on a nightly basis. I mean, he's that good defensively. And you saw his playmaking ability on display fully um, with that fifth goal. And then the Penguins are able to ice the game with Tristan Jari getting the win. But, you know, th that is just basically a recap of the goals and just my biggest takeaways. Um, coming up in the next segment, well, actually, no. One more thing I should say. Why not the Penguins at this point? I mean, I mean, I, I, truly, this team is so freaking good. They're so freaking deep. They have a hell of a goaltender. Their defense is mobile. No one is really screwing up back there. I'll even say this. Mike Matheson is playing some of his finest hockey of his career the last week or so. Last week, week and a half. And, you know, outside of a few, you know, chaotic moments, he hasn't been killing them that much this season, which is huge. Um, but if they can just get a backup goaltender and, you know, Gino and Carter come back and they continue to kill it, 
there aren't going to be a lot of teams in this conference that are going to beat the Penguins in a seven-game series. I'll just say it right now. Obviously, they're not going to continue this winning streak forever. They will go into a slump or two. That's the nature of an NHL regular season. I mean, you know, even, you know, Carolina at the top, the Rangers, Washington, they'll go into some slumps at some point, and, you know, there'll be quite being questions asked. But, you know, those teams are also really good this year. Colorado, they've had a little bit of a, of a slump. They've been starting to turn around a little bit. But at the end of the day, this team is a contender. And I think people, more people need to start realizing this, especially nationally. But also at the same time, I'm fine with people doubting the Penguins a little bit just because I also don't need all the media attention that, you know, say a Tampa Bay gets or, you know, a Vegas gets or something like that. Let people have the Penguins fly under the radar because right now um, they are playing like the best team in hockey. Um, and right, I mean, in my opinion, they are a top five team in the league right now. So um, I just wanted to end the segment with that. Coming up in the last segment, we're going to go into some listener takeaways from, I haven't done those in a while, but I wanted to include the listeners in this episode, of course. Before we do that, um, BetOnline would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. BetOnline remains in the, the number one spot for all the best sporting wagering action for 2022. There's a new year, and that means a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on to get started from football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite, favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. That is Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, welcome back here to this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I'm your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. So, getting into some listener takeaways here. Alan T. Yoder, of course, makes an appearance. He was at the game. Alan, you picked a hell of a game to go to. Um, I'm very jealous. It looks like the crowd was really into it tonight. Um, you can tell the Penguins are starting to get close to getting that sellout, sellout streak back going. Um, obviously, it was not going to continue forever. Screw COVID. But that crowd was really lively tonight. Um, and I know it's been an emotional week for Pittsburgh sports with Ben Roethlisberger probably playing his last game this coming Sunday against the Ravens. But, you know, it's glad it's a, it's a good reminder of the people, the fine people of Pittsburgh that they have a hockey team that is really freaking good right now and has a chance to do some damage this season. But Allen says um, the Penguins team is impressive. Yes, they do need a backup goaltender. Rodriguez, I would love to extend as well, Allen. I think at this point you're looking at if they can get it done three years, three and a half million per, but are, can they do it with the cap space? That's the question because uh, Gino and Tanger are up after this year. Um, Brian Russ is up, but I don't really think he's going to get extended. Just, just saying. I, I think Jeff Carter is probably going to walk as well. At this time, I would like a Sperry Kapanen walk for sure. But I just don't see the team um, just resigning Russ, even though Elliot Freeman confirmed in his 31 thoughts, or 32 thoughts, excuse me, that they have started contract talks a little bit with Rust, Malkin, and Latang. He also did say, good teams find ways to win. Tonight is the perfect example. Love the first and third period. The second period wasn't good despite Russ two goals. I think they played okay in that second, Allen. It was just, I think it's, you know, it's it's being overshadowed, you know, by the fact that uh, Casey DeSmith was really bad in that period. You know, he started out the game fine, made some really nice saves, and then, you know, in typical DeSmith fashion, just decided to crap the bed um, for whatever reason. Um, Ashley Craig says, do not make Cindy Crosby bleed his own blood on his own eyes. He will make you regret it, and his team will make you regret it. That might be the listener takeaway of the year right there, Ashley. Um, uh, it's just, yeah, when you piss Cindy Crosby off, bad things are going to happen. You know, again, he had that beautiful vintage screw you goal tonight where he had that celly where he, he looked pissed. Um, after the game, he had the interview with uh, Biz and um, Rick Tockett and all the guys at TNT. and he had that hilarious thing on his nose and he's just like, yeah, I mean, what, what can you do at that point? Um, Jackson Hollister says, Evan Rodriguez is insane. We need to pay him this off season. Um, the only thing I can see that'll help is getting a backup goalie. Um, outside of that, Sullivan just continues to get the best out of this team and Crosby wills this team to victory night in and night out. Yeah, and again, man, this was Sidney Crosby's finest performance of the season. Um, he looks all the way back at this point. Um, I know it was a slow start. Uh, I said as such on the podcast multiple times, but um, he was flying tonight and, you know, he's going to get some reinforcements coming in the next few days with Jeff Carter being ready. Would not be surprised if Carter goes on Thursday, though I must uh, preface that there's a chance that game might be postponed 
because the Flyers have a huge outbreak going right now. Um, Connecting was placed in COVID protocol today. Um, they have a lot of players in COVID, and you know Couturier is banged up. Um, I'm not sure if that game's going to get played. Um, but you know, yeah, Rodriguez just talked about it as well. Jackson, he needs to get paid. I, I hope he does um, because he's been ridiculous this season. I loved what Jay Fresh Hockey said on, on Twitter. Uh, Erod uh, better than McFraud, as of course it's a homage to Connor McDavid. Um, but <laughs> I just I can't get through that without laughing a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, Sully is definitely getting the best out of this team. He should probably win Jack Adams, the win, win the Jack Adams right now, but I'm sure they're going to give it to someone else. Maybe like, um, I'm like blanking. Uh, I, I'm, I'm blanking on a, a few names. Maybe, maybe John Hines down in Nashville or something like that. Um, I, I'm not sure. So, um, Whatever. If Mike Sullivan doesn't win it, you know, I'll be a little upset, but I'll also kind of be like, you know, he's been snubbed the last few years. Um, I'm not really surprised at this point. And then um, Jim uh, Basil says, Tristan forecheck it, of course, with the depth of talent scoring and defense. Yeah, 100%, man. All of those tonight were huge for the Penguins um, for getting their win. And, you know, I'm glad Iris AJ said to the Locked On Penguins Twitter account, um, had that perfect mean of Erod from OV spot with just a big nuke in the ocean. Um, it, it doesn't get better than that. So just a huge win for Pittsburgh. I mean, that this team is firing on all cylinders right now. You don't win championships in January, obviously. This team is probably going to go into a slump at some point. But this team's a contender. You know, I, I'm tired of reading from people. How, you know, I don't understand how the Penguins are so good. How are they doing this? I mean, it's pretty obvious how they're doing this. They have the, – they have – top five defensive metrics in the league. Their goaltender, starting goaltender at least, is playing at a Vesna caliber level. Their forward depth, even without Gino and Carter right now, is disgusting. And they have a top three coach in the game. That's what's going on. And you're seeing the reward of having all of those things right now at this nine-game winning streak. So, um, oh, one more thing. I like what TNT has done this year. I think it's a much better broadcast than NBC. Um, I actually have been able to learn some things on the broadcast. That inter intermission is actually a lot more fun with Rick talking and Biz being funny. That said, I've grown tired of listening to regional color commentators on nationally televised games, especially in this case, Darren Payne. Don't get me wrong. I think Darren Payne is a really good color commentator. He's probably one of the best in the league. But – he should not be calling a Blues game on national television because I just felt like it was a homer fest all night long. Wasn't really talking about the Penguins as much. Was just, you know, going all into the Blues anytime he can. Um, and this goes for anything. You know, Keith Jones on NBC, Mike Milbury when he was there, Pierre Maguire whenever he just blabbered about nonsense, you know, Eddie Olchek with the Blackhawks. <clears throat> but I'm just, I've grown tired of it. Um, it, it doesn't make the broadcast good. Brendan Burke, I think, is one of the best play-by-play -play announcers in the NHL. But it's, you know, it, that's overshadowed by the fact that Pang is just, you know, being ridiculously biased towards the Blues. And I don't worry. I, I get it. You know, he calls the Blues games for, you know, Blues fans on their regional network. He's really good at it. That said, you got to be neutral in these type of broadcasts. He was anything but that. But just, I just did not care for that part of the broadcast at all tonight. Um, as of right now, the Penguins are scheduled to play the Flyers in Philly tomorrow night. Um, if I recall, I'm, I said on Wednesday that it was a game on ESPN plus. I'm looking to confirm that on the NHL app right now. Yes, it is an ESPN plus Hulu exclusive. So it will not be televised regionally in Pittsburgh. So I said on Tuesday, I'll say it again. Now, if you want to watch the game, Either listen to it with Josh Getzoff and Phil Bork, or you can buy a subscription to ESPN Plus, which again is very worth it. But that'll do it for this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I really appreciate all of you listening to this one. We will be back on Thursday with another full game recap for the Penguins if that game does get played. If not, I'll change some plans up, still provide you also with some really good content. Um, but you know, we're rocking and rolling right now. Penguins are back in action, they're playing some damn good hockey. And Let's see what they can do, especially when they get um, a little healthier with injuries and COVID and all that. So thank you all so much for listening to this one, and I'll be back on Thursday.